you've got two narratives. One is we're doing the best we can. It's the unvaccinated who are causing this pandemic to go on and on. And we've got the tool at our disposal and people just need to use it. Okay, that's obvious nonsense, but nonetheless, that's the story. Um, and then you've got the alternative narrative, which is actually the vaccines, interesting as they are as a technological discovery, have multiple design failures within them. They are weak as can be, which anybody, you don't need any biological knowledge whatsoever to recognize that if they've faded to the point you need a booster in six months, this isn't much of a vaccine by any standard, right? So, but also, there's no pretense that they prevent transmission. Right. So, oh, and it's this incredible cognitive dissonance, this incredible intellectual discontent that people, your friends, are telling you, you can't come to my party because you're unvaccinated. And you can't even say to them, but the vaccines, but Tony Fauci says, the vaccines don't prevent transmission. Right. And you can tell somebody that fact and the reaction will be to get furious at you rather than say, oh, um, and how am I protected? We know that vaccinated people are equally likely from all the data that we have to pass the illness to you. They may, you know, there's a lot of data that says if you're vaccinated, you're more likely. Yep. Well, I can't say that's true because um, we do not have, because nobody's, you know, funding the science to show that, but the science that we have and also common sense. And this is what Luke Montanier, who discovered, you know, won the Nobel Prize for discovering the HIV virus in 1993. And what he said from the beginning, if you, if you, vaccinate people with a, what they call a leaky vaccine, which is a vaccine that does not prevent transmission during the height of a pandemic. You are turning every vaccinated person into a mutant factory. You're actually, it's a, each person <laughs> is a, uh, a serial passage gain of function experiment. Exactly. De facto. For the same reason that subtherapeutic antibiotics. Right. Exactly. Generate, um, generate uh, antibiotics resistant superbugs, yep. a vaccine that is subtherapeutic is gonna, is by every, from anybody who understands natural selection or biological evolution would immediately say, of course, that is gonna create mutant superbugs. Right now, and they've played this game, they've played it with me, and I don't much like it because they accuse me of not understanding what I'm talking about, when in fact, what they're doing is just playing a linguistic game. We say, escape mutants, right? That puts the emphasis on mutation. And so they make this argument that the number of cases is, is proportional to the amount of mutation, which is of course true, but it's the selection for the mutants that are resistant to these vaccines that is driving this. So the, they, these are escape variants, which is the result of selection, which is very definitely happening in those who have been vaccinated. What's more, and this is, again, very hard to convey to people who haven't been paying attention, but COVID is not the worst disease it might be from the point of view of the symptoms, but it's very bad on its own. Right. It does damage to many different types of tissue. It does tax all organs, right. essentially. All organs, which I take to be indicative, actually, of the likely origin from the lab, because most bugs have to pay attention to, you know, keeping you on your feet. So you spread them. But in a laboratory, things are very different. If you're spreading it in a tissue or in an animal that doesn't have to forage, right? It can, right. It can you, if, if you are a pathogen and you want your host to be eating, drinking, having sex, going to parties. Right. Um, and, and because you, the advantage goes to the ones that are not sickening every organ in their host. Right. So this is a bad disease. And Heather and I have said that from the beginning. This is a dangerous disease. Yeah. Those who downplay it were making a mistake. The irony is that this has actually changed. This was a very dangerous disease until some very good, dedicated doctors figured out how to treat it, right? It is now a very manageable disease, except for the fact that all of the tools that would prevent it and are useful in treating it are being removed from the table as quickly as possible. And so the idea that, you know, it isn't one, you know, yes, ivermectin, indeed, there's a really good drug that works really well in this case. We know that from doctor's clinical experience. Likewise, hydroxychloroquine, 
But even if you take those off the table, we still have a whole host of substances that work. And we actually, in fact, have substances that prevent people from coming down with it. And yet our public health response does not include a discussion of things like vitamin D and zinc and magnesium, right? This is unconscionable, right? We are actually talking about a disease that at great cost we have learned how to deal with. It does not require us to lock down the world at this moment because we have enough knowledge, but we're not deploying it. And so what they've effectively left us is a vaccine that is effectively an interesting prototype, right? Not nearly well enough understood, not nearly safe enough to be deployed into the public, not justified on the basis that it doesn't, uh, as you point out, prevent transmission, right? We have this prototype vaccine being deployed as if it's a solution to the pandemic and the actual solutions are being uh, kept out of play. And that is keeping this disease much more dangerous than it actually is or would need to be at this point. This is preposterous. It's the up, upside down inverse public health response. And the problem, I mean, really, let's, let's talk about the actual problem. The actual problem is if what I just said is true, then the world is upside down. That leaves the person watching this podcast with nothing to grab onto. Okay, so there are some renegades who say we're doing the exact inf inverse of what we should be doing. Even if you would acknowledge that, it doesn't tell you how you change anything. So, you know, at least I think people are simply doubling down on the idea that the public health authorities must be doing the right thing. Yeah. Because if, if they're not, it's hopeless. Yeah. And it's hard, you, you know, you discredit yourself and marginalize yourself if you... Even by inventorying all the like bad things they do, because the the um, the conclusion that you kind of corral yourself into is feeling like they, you know, a lot of evidence that they're deliberately doing things that they know are wrong to harm public health, and you know that's for most people that's um, it's impossible to believe.